Hey guys, this is Eric Moran, author of Welcome to Mintland, and welcome to the Welcome to Mintland podcast. The reason I created this podcast is because, well, our athletes are busy between school, other curricular activities, practice three to four times a week, and the competition season. It's a little tough to sit down and digest a book. I created this podcast with young readers and listeners in mind. I'm going to chop this book up into 10-minute segments so they're easily digestible and easy to listen to on the go. I hope you enjoy Chapter 1 of Welcome to Mintland. Thank you for listening. Welcome to Mintland, written by Eric Moran, based on a true story. This book is dedicated to my daughters and the 2014-2015 Minnie Mints and Mickey. Your effort, teamwork, and belief in yourself helped you to achieve a lifelong memory that will never be taken away. May you cherish this moment forever and reflect upon this as you go through life. May your path be filled with full outs that hit, tumbles that never bust, and stunts that never fall. Chapter 1. The Beginning of Something Special As the 2013-2014 season wrapped up for the Stingray All-Stars, it was quite evident that next year would be very different. With their first year in the books at one of the most world-renowned gyms in the world, my young daughters found a passion for something they truly love. As a father, I was captivated as well. Two very close sisters spent every waking hour creating new routines, tumbling in grocery stores, and stunting on the back of couches. I could not help but get caught up in their enthusiasm. It was more than that for me. I fed off my daughter's enthusiasm. And learning about all-star cheer became a passion of mine. I became a student and a sponge. After all, when you have a four-year-old and you take her to the Champions League movie and she critiques every level five team on form and being clean, you better know your stuff. The Stingray All-Stars Peppermint are comprised of six, seven, and eight-year-olds. They're a group of kids that live within 30-mile radius of the Stingray Gym in Marietta, Georgia. A few come from farther. Level one means they are restricted by what skills they can throw in a routine. Basically, their hands or feet can never leave the floor for any tumbling. Stunts are comprised of limited height and multiple bases to support the athlete as to limit exposure to injury. Fun to watch, but compared to a senior level 5 team, it typically does not draw the same level of crowds or fanfare. It was time for the Summit and Worlds competition in Orlando, Florida. Friends and teammates gathered at our house for viewing parties to watch our beloved gym take on some of the most gifted athletes in the world. Our senior level five team, the Stingray All-Stars Orange, were about to take the stage for the final time. They had an opportunity to win their eighth world championship in which they succeeded in doing. It was a very special time for our gym as Orange is a staple for Stingrays. Everyone looks up to them and models them. Although Orange did not dominate every competition like in years past, they pulled it out when it counted most, and almost everyone counted them out, but they did it. The world title gave my daughters a confidence of belonging and pride as they both practiced next to Orange and watched their every move at least twice a week. The new season was coming up quickly, and we knew my youngest child would be on a tiny team. The Grape Rays, as they are called, are adored by many across the nation. This team is comprised of four-year-olds and five-year-olds. What the coaches do with these little athletes is absolutely amazing. People seek out and watch Grape as they boggle minds in every competition, performing routines and building believers in what these kids can do 
together as teammates. My older daughter was working to get on a mini level two team, working extremely hard to perfect required tumbling skills to meet the level two requirements. Tryouts were coming up and she knew she had to put in the hours. It was going to be close, but I think we knew she may come up a little short executing the level two skills this year. At Stingrays, there is an unintentional pressure applied to go to the next level. Friendships and bonds built from previous teams help drive these athletes to stay with each other for more reasons than one. The bonds that are created over a season are indescribable. You want to stay on the team with your friends. Unfortunately, skill levels change and the speed of which athletes pick up tumbling, stunting, and body position skills varies for multiple reasons. Growth spurts, athleticism, talent, and work ethic, maturity, all factor in when building desired skill levels in teams. At Stingrays, they build teams to win, period. They very carefully analyze the athletes to build the perfect formula for success, from the most prestigious level five teams all the way down to the tiny level. While all-star cheerleading is defined by the incredible athleticism of the level five all-star cheerleaders, this story is about a special group of level one all-star cheerleaders that inspired many. Level five cheerleaders are incredible athletes who sacrifice everything to perfect a two minute and 30 second routine. They compete against teams around the world perfecting tumbling, stunting, and dance. The competitions bring tens of thousands of viewers and create rabid fans from all over the world that follow their teams religiously at competitions on ESPN and CBS Sports. There is serious sacrifice, dedication, hard practices, and risks of serious injury, all to be the best in the world. The last month of cheer season entails working four to five times a week in the gym, perfecting your tumbling and stunting skills in preparation for tryouts. Kids work their tails off to try to get to the next level team. As a dad, it was important for me to make sure my daughters were set up to succeed, not so much that she moved on to the next level. The coaching staff for the entire gym is incredible. While many coaches have their strengths and weaknesses, the entire staff complements each other to perfectly make sure they maximize each athlete's talents. My daughter was on Peppermint in her first year, which was a very successful season. Peppermint won every single competition they entered, except the first one, where they finished in fifth place. The coaching staff was incredible. If I had my way, I would want my daughter to be on the team again to build her fundamentals and build her confidence for the years ahead. She had her sights set on staying with her friends from the previous season. We would soon find out if she would achieve that dream or not. While the previous season at Stingrays was successful, it did not feel that the entire gym was happy with the overall performance of all of the teams. No one said it directly, but it was felt. As a parent that spent four to five days a week in that gym, I could tell the intensity level was ramping up this year. Going into the new 2014-2015 tryout season, there was a new energy. It was going to be different for all levels. You could just feel it. Hey everyone, that concludes chapter one of Welcome to Mintland. Chapter two will be coming very, very soon. I appreciate you taking the time to listen. If you like the podcast, please give us a ranking. It will certainly help our cause. My goal is to have every all-star cheerleader either listen or read this book. It's a fabulous story. Talk with you soon. Welcome to Midland. The greatest place on